Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dean of the Rossier School of Education, Karen Sims Gallagher. So good afternoon and welcome to the installation ceremony for Dr. Sean Harper as the Cliff <laughs> as the Clifford H. and Betty C. Allen Chair in Urban Leadership at the USC Rossier School of Education. Sean is also, uh, also has a joint appointment uh, in the USC Marshall School of Business. And I want to thank all of you for uh, joining us today, especially our alumni, school and university leaders, friends, students, and faculty. Um, I want to give you, uh, I want to give out a, a specific welcome to several people who have joined us for this very special occasion. And I'm going to introduce them in groups. You know this routine if you've ever been introduced by the president. So um, I'm going to ask first my uh, board of councilor members who are here, uh, let's, they'll stand and then to, uh, collectively we'll give them a round of applause. So first of all, Ravita Bowers. Uh, Yes, Brent Noyes and Doreen Peterson. Thank you. We also have some distinguished uh, university guests. Um, Todd, uh, pardon me, Todd, um, Mark Todd, who is Vice Provost for Academic Operations, um, and Lynette Merriman, who is the Associate Vice Provost for Campus Crisis Support and Intervention, and... Okay, thank you for coming. <laughs> we also have uh, deans and assistant deans from uh, uh, various schools here. First of all, Milton Curry, who is dean of the School of Architecture. Uh, Catherine Quinlan, dean of USC Libraries. Brandy Jones, who is the USC Viterbi vice dean. And Deborah Langford, USC Marshall assistant dean. Thank you for coming. also have some special guests that uh, Sean has invited. And first of all, his husband, Sean Hill. Let's, we're going to give you... No. <laughs> Evelyn Carr Sanders, who's a family friend who has come all the way from Ohio. Thank you, Evelyn. <laughs> and uh, Walter Allen, has he arrived from UCLA, all the way from Westwood? We'll recognize him later. Okay, this afternoon's occasion is one steeped in history. The history of higher ed, the history of USC, and certainly the history of USC Rossier School of Education. Since the first endowed professorship was funded in England more than 500 years ago, it has been a tradition to honor both the benefactor and the recipient distinguished professor and to acknowledge the historical threat and significance of the endowed chair within the academic community. That historical threat is certainly evident today as we honor Dr. Harper, the second holder of this chair and the executive director of the USC Race and Equity Center. In 2007, we installed Dr. Dominic Brewer as the first chair following the creation of this endowment by Clifford and Betty Allen. And while the Allens are no longer with us, we really honor their memory. Dr. Clifford Allen's generosity embodied the spirit and purpose of this chair. He created it to link theory and research in the practice of urban education and urban leadership. For over 20 years, Dr. Allen served as an administrator for the Los Angeles Unified School District. The emphasis on urban leadership in this endowed title was purposeful because Cliff was always dedicated to LAUSD as an urban school district. This chair is particularly significant to USC Rossier because the holder plays a critical role in helping us to achieve our mission of advancing educational equity. Cliff Allen was uh, acknowledged by his peers as the district leader who influenced, developed, and defined the field of risk management and public school administration. Indeed, Dr. Allen was a pioneer whose professional contributions created a model still in use today. In addition, Cliff taught university-level courses to several generations of school administrators, lending his expertise and knowledge about uh, school business management practices and school finance. Cliff's leadership was evidenced in his 40-year involvement with the California Teachers Credit Union Board, 
where he held several positions, including chairman of the board, yet another indication of his lifelong commitment to LAUSD. Cliff and Betty left an exemplary legacy of philanthropy. They supported a number of endeavors, including the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, the Eisenhower Medical Center in Palm Springs, and Helping Children Smile, Inc., a volunteer organization that raises money to undertake cleft palate surgery on children in rural areas where treatment is not available because of poverty and lack of access to specialist surgery. Today we honor both Cliff and Betty Allen for their generosity in uh, creating this important chair at the USC Rossier School. We are indeed indebted to their vision, loyalty, and contributions as members of our Trojan family. Now I'm pleased to introduce and welcome USC Provost Dr. Michael Quick. Michael Quick was uh, appointed Provost in April of 2015. He also serves as Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs and as Professor of Biological Sciences in the USC Dornsife College of Letters, Arts, and Sciences. His strategic priorities for the university include tackling the wicked problems confronting the 21st century, which has led to the creation of university initiatives fo focusing on homelessness, immigration, Artists for Social Change, Enhancing Security and Sustainability, and Ensuring life, Lifespan Health. Among his priorities are equity, diversity, opportunity, and access. Provost Quick was eager to bring Sean Harper to USC and Rossier because he understood how the USC Race and Equity Center would be central to the university's overall strategies to act on these key priorities. Please help me welcome Provost Michael Quick. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Great turnout, my goodness. Um, all for you, Sean. Um, actually, to both Sean's, uh, welcome. Um, <laughs> welcome so much. Uh, uh, one Sean back to USC, another uh, Sean to Southern California. Um, uh, you know, we're much like the mafia. Once you're in, you don't get out. And uh, sometimes you get away for a little while, we bring you back. Um, and so it is great to uh, uh, be able to... Uh, share this great time with both of you. Um, it's a great day for the university. It's a great day for the Rossier School of Education. Uh, Karen, the work you've been doing um, on a lot of the priorities you mentioned that are my priorities uh, and, and what I hope to be the priorities of the university, um, the Rossier School has been leading on, especially your interest around uh, issues of diversity and inclusion uh, and uh, the value of access and opportunity uh, to everyone at all levels and uh, you know no more so uh, than your commitment to urban education but the idea that uh, not only do we need to be better on our campus we need to be better across Southern California and we need to be leading the way and that's really what led us to a conversation about who could we have at this university that would bring this to the forefront, and uh, it was such an honor for you to ask me to partner with you uh, to bring Sean Harper and the Race and Equity Center to USC. Um, you know, I am so proud of this university uh, for a number of reasons, but no more so than the effort and the advances we have made over the last couple of years on issues of diversity and inclusion. Um, you know, we have such a special opportunity at a university. We get the opportunity to try out what the future should look like in the world. That's how I view our issues and, 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 and how we, we wrestle with things like diversity and inclusion. That it, this is our opportunity to model for the world what the world should look like. That is such a privilege at a university to have the opportunity to do that. I also love the fact that this issue plays against a long-standing incorrect view of this university as being the University of Spoiled Children. We are a university that has been pushing forward on issues around diversity and inclusion for a number of years, and over the last couple of years, have made a concerted effort at every level 
undergraduate, graduate, uh, faculty on our campus, around our surrounding communities to say that every person has the opportunity to achieve what they can achieve. Let's find ways to allow them to have that opportunity. The university never does things small. We want to lead. Uh, that is our responsibility as a, as, as a great research university to lead. Um, and so that means if you're going to do diversity and inclusion, we can't just count the heads of, of, of particular people and feel good about ourselves. We have to make sure that we are doing everything we can to show the rest of the world how to do this. I think one of the big ways over the last couple of years that we've shown this is to say, let's bring the leading voice on issues of equity and race to this university and let them help lead us forward, uh, be real leaders in this. And so I am so honored uh, to have participated in bringing uh, Sean and the Race and Equity Center here to the university. It is not just a Rossier issue. This is, a, this is a, 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 a center that spans this university. And in that regard, over the last number of years, we've been bringing a number of leaders to this university um, whose efforts span the entire breadth of USC, whose efforts aren't in one discipline or in one school, but in multi-disciplines and multi-schools. And one of the big areas that I think USC can have a great strength is what we call convergence, bringing people, uh, 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 scientists and creative artists and, and researchers and scholars, to work at the fringes of disciplines, to bring disciplines together, to mash them up in new ways and to, and to think about how to create new ways of going forward in the world. And for the best of the best of those faculty, we give them the designation provost professor. And it is my great honor to announce formally for the first time at the university uh, that in addition to being the Clifford and Betty Allen chair holder in urban leadership, Sean Harper will also carry the designation provost professor of education and business. Congratulations, my friend. That's all. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. That is hard to top. So congratulations again, Sean. So now it is my honor to introduce Dr. Sean Harper. I've known Sean since 2003 when we hired him at USC right out of his PhD in, in, at Indiana University. Now, for those you don't know, that was really uh, interesting because I got my PhD at Purdue University in Indiana. So right out of the box, we've had this little back and forth about uh, our alma maters for our PhD. Sean provided extraordinary leadership by serving as the inaugural executive director of our then newly revamped doctorate in educational leadership. After departing USC Rossier in 2005, he went on to build a remarkable career of impact within and beyond the academy, first as an assistant professor of education at Penn State University, and then as a professor in the Graduate School of Education, Africana, studies and gender studies at the University of Pennsylvania, where he also founded the Center for the Study of Race and Equity in Education. And now he's returned to us, we're so happy, to lead the new USC Race and Equity Center. Sean has become one of the country's foremost scholars on race and equity in urban high schools and on college and university campuses. And now with his center, he is uniting dozens of professors across USC's academic schools, whose, folk, whose, leadership, or pardon me, whose scholarship focuses on racial inequities in and beyond high school and college settings. Many of these professors are here with us today. In addition, Sean is the current president of the Association for the Study of Higher Education. 
He received that organization's early career award in 2008. He is an elected member of the American Educational Research Association's Executive Council, and he was also named a fellow at AERA this year. In 2015, he was named to the Advisory Council of the My Brother's Keeper uh, Alliance, an initiative launched by former President Barack, Obama's, uh, Barack Obama to improve the lives of men and young men, boys and men of color. Sean has published more than 100 peer-reviewed journal articles and a dozen books, including a new book coming out soon called Race Matters in College. Sean's research offers a distinctive anti-deficit perspective on the academic success of boys and young men of color in urban high schools and in higher education. Through his examination of students' experiences with racial stress and racism in schools and colleges, he is exposing the long-standing practices and policies that cyclically reproduce and exacerbate racial inequalities um, and inequities in education and in society. So, Sean, I invite you up to the stage, and if I could have you back, Provost Quick, too. Before we allow uh, Sean to speak, we're going to present him with his chair. <laughs> we want you to accept this chair in recognition of the importance of the Clifford H. and Betty C. Uh, uh, chair in uh, educational leadership, and this is a, uh, you know, a daily example of what it means uh, among all the work that you are going to be doing. So uh, I think we're going to do a photo shoot. <laughs> Now, Sean, please. Good afternoon. It is wonderful to see you all. Having you here really means the world to me. Uh, thank you. I have written some remarks um, because I'm more thoughtful that way uh, when I write things. Uh, I began by thanking Clifford and Betty Allen and their family for their commitment to education and to their generous support and contribution to the University of Southern California. Learning about Clifford and Betty Allen over the past several months makes me especially honored to occupy the endowed chair that bears their name. I promise to do so with great honor, gratitude, and grace. Provost Quick, Dean Gallagher, Thank you for bringing me home to USC. At my going away party 12 years ago, on the eve of my foolish departure for colder temperatures in the Northeast, Karen repeatedly emphasized that I will forever be a member of the Trojan family. Over the years, I've always felt connected to USC. I watched from afar as this university rose to eminence. I very much felt like a proud member of the Trojan family, even as I advanced my career at Penn. This Trojan family reunion at this time, in this place, with each of you here, really means the world to me. Thank you, Karen, and thank all of you who are here. And thanks to those who are joining us virtually via Facebook Live. <laughs> I would be remiss if I didn't say a few words about Provost Quick. Through the center I created at Penn and now at the USC Race and Equity Center, I'm afforded the incredible privilege of working with thousands of college and university presidents, provosts, deans, and other senior leaders all across the country. I advise them. I help them plan and advance equity goals. I give them useful data about racial climates on their campuses. 
and I consistently challenge them to make good on the promises concerning diversity, equity, and inclusion that they espouse in their mission statements, in their speeches, and elsewhere on their campuses. All the provosts I have met say to me that they are seriously committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Seriously, I've not met a provost yet who hasn't suggested to me that she or he is firmly committed to these things. Saying it is very different from meaning it, doing it, and holding others accountable for it. Provost Quick says it, he means it, he does it, and he holds others accountable for it. He is the reason I am here at USC. He is the reason we relocated our center from the University of Pennsylvania here to USC. Please join me in thanking our provost for his commitment. I would like to quickly acknowledge three additional people. First, my husband, Sean, who is seated here on the front row. I am grateful, Sean, that you graciously agreed to marry into this Trojan family. <laughs> Trust me, you married up. fight on. <laughs> Only here, not home. No fighting at home, just here. <laughs> fight on. Sean, this homecoming to Los Angeles is especially amazing because you are here with me. Isn't this super fun? <laughs> Your love and support make me happy. I really appreciate you. Second, I acknowledge my dear friend and favorite USC faculty colleague, Estella Ben-Simone founding director of the USC Center for Urban Education. Estella is traveling right now. We spoke with her on our drive-in uh, to campus this afternoon. She's away doing important equity work with higher education leaders and faculty members. But Estella sent me a beautiful telegram this morning, like a, an actual telegram. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy calls me on my cell phone and he says, I have a telegram for you, and I think that it's like, I don't know, like somebody's scamming me, but like, no, like he's calling because Estella sent me an actual telegram. In it, she wrote, and I quote, in these terribly vulgar political times where each day we have to bear the racist assaults of indecent leaders, your ascendancy as a leader and scholar of education and national public intellectual gives me hope, end quote. <laughs> For 20 years, Estella's important, courageous scholarship and her brilliant approaches to advancing equity have given me hope. So I am just really thrilled to be reunited with her here at USC. And I'm deeply grateful, not only for her telegram, but also for her love and friendship and support and great example. Last but certainly not least, I want to acknowledge Dr. Walter Allen, the Allen Murray Carter Professor of Higher Education and Distinguished Professor of Sociology at UCLA. The Association for the Study of Higher Education National Conference is being held week after next, which will be the conclusion of my presidential year. For sure, the highlight for me will be awarding my one and only presidential medal to Walter Allen. I convinced the Ash Board of Directors to create this new award that each future president of the association will give to one significant person during their presidential year. Honestly, I only did this because I had to find some meaningful way to publicly acknowledge and convey my love and appreciation and respect to Walter Allen. I didn't, really didn't care that much about future presidents giving a medal to someone. I'm glad that they're going to do that, but you know, really this was about Walter and me. <laughs> I first encountered his groundbreaking research in my master's degree program. He primarily writes about black people, which was a mind-blowing departure from the almost entirely white cast of authors assigned to my classmates and me in graduate school. In many ways, Walter gave me license to study our people 
and the racism that persistently disadvantages us, and to do so with rigor, courage, and great responsibility. Coincidentally, Dr. Allen was the first black professor I met who holds an endowed chair. There are not sufficient words to convey what it means to have my mentor and role model in the audience at my installation. I love you, Walter, and will forever appreciate your extraordinary influence on my career. I am because you are. Please, a round of applause for Professor Walter Allen. I've chosen to conclude these remarks by juxtaposing honor with respect. My great-grandparents' parents were slaves. They and other enslaved African people were terrorized in these United States for hundreds of years. Dishonor and devaluating devaluing of black lives did not end with their emancipation from the brutality of their slave masters. I grew up in a small, racially segregated town in South Georgia. There, I, as a child, observed considerable and repeated disrespect of my people. As early as five years old, I, as a young, intellectually curious social scientist, <laughs> took notice of the extreme stratification of the place I lived. Most whites were wealthy and occupied positions of significant leadership and authority in our town. Most of us black people were poor and disadvantaged by racism in its myriad forms. I found this both curious and disrespectful. Hence, my lifelong commitment to work on race and racial justice in America. My family back in Georgia is very large. Our stance as a family has always been that disrespect for one of us affects all of us. One of us cannot enjoy respect while knowing the others are suffering. I bring these family values to my professorship and directorship here at USC. I have never felt more honored than I feel right now. I really hope that my deep gratitude for this installment is apparent to each of you who've gathered here today and gathered virtually. Naming someone a provost professor, there are only 18 of them across the whole university, is an undeniable signal of respect for that person's scholarship. Michael, I thank you for that. And indeed, awarding someone an endowed chair is the highest indicator of respect that a dean can show to a faculty colleague. Karen, I thank you for that. As a scholar of color, I am especially honored by these demonstrations of respect for me and my work. But we should be mindful that the overwhelming majority of faculty members of color who participate in our campus climate studies share horrifying, heartbreaking stories of disrespect with which Professor Charles Davis, other researchers, and I at our center try to make sense and try to be helpful. While I appreciate the respect that I enjoy here, I will never be fully honored until others like me are given the respect they deserve. One of my schools here has no tenured black faculty members besides me. 
doing nothing to correct this would significantly diminish the honor that I feel right now. My other school has only one black woman among its tenured ranks. Hiring more, treating them right, valuing their work, and perhaps even reconvening us here at Town and Gown for their installations, for their endowed chairs, would make me feel even more honored than I feel right now. Discontinuing unjustifiable excuses about why we can't recruit and retain more professors of color here would be delightfully respectful to me and others like me. Not only in Rossier and Marshall, but across all of USC's 19 academic schools. Let me help. <laughs> I don't mean to appear ungrateful or to conclude my remarks on a somber note. Instead, I hope these words inspire us to become the most racially diverse, racially inclusive, and racially respectful university in the country. That would engender even greater gratitude than I feel right now. Again, thank you all for being here, and thanks in advance for your continued support as my USC Race and Equity Center colleagues, our faculty affiliates, Provost Quick, other Trojan family members, and I collaboratively fight on for equity and inclusion and diversity, not only in our university, but in our world. Fight on. I think you can understand why we wanted Sean to come back to the Trojan family. He is not um, afraid to speak truth to power, to really call out, uh, thank you for the honor, but we have lots of work to do. And the reason that I am so glad that he's in the School of Education is because I strongly believe that education is the road to uh, equity for students and for the pe their families. So I think it's particularly fitting that he is in the School of Ed as it, and, and business. I'm not going to uh, forget <laughs> business. But education is, I think, the, uh, an important, uh, we need to remember it's an important step for having the world that Sean um, just described. I want to thank all of you for coming today. We have food and drink and lots of chances I know uh, that Sean wants to speak, Sean and Sean want to speak to all of you. So thank you for coming today and fight on. Thank you.